and what's up everybody i'm back with another video game review and today i am reviewing spyro year of the dragon or better known as spyro 3 um this game was released i think in 1999 or 2000 i don't know exactly um, I'm still on the PS1, uh, but later also remastered for the Spyro Reignited Trilogy, which is how I played it on the Switch. Um, so once again, thank you to Like and Mifrey for letting me borrow this game. And this is the third and final entry in the Spyro Trilogy. Um, and you know, what was I? I was still looking for a little bit of an aha moment with, with the Spyro Trilogy. I know there were more after that one, and I've got like... What sort of a Spyro game still on the list. But, what did I think about this game? And overall, uh, I'll get at the end of this video, I'll also talk about kind of my overall opinion about Spyro as a franchise for video games. So, but let's jump right into it, shall we? Um, this game felt like almost a carbon, like a carbon copy of Spyro 2. Um, they didn't even bother to fix a lot of the issues that I had about Spyro 2, um, which in turn feels a lot like Spyro 1. So there's just a lot of things that merged together and really carried over with these three. And I don't understand, like, a lot of people call this the best one in the trilogy. And it definitely felt like that kind of, but in my opinion, it just felt like a carbon copy of 2. Like a lot of the same stuff in a lot of the same places. A lot of things seem to do. I don't know. Let's let's leave with other stuff. I thought the story was a little weaker, which is saying something because there isn't much of a story to begin with. But um, this one did feel a little weaker, though. The cool, a really cool character addition in this game is Bianca. I love seeing her character growth and development through through the game. Um, and it does save the story from being absolutely a complete snoozer and abysmal. Um, also, there's a lot of romance stuff. I don't understand why that had to be in the game, but, uh, okay, um, weird, weird stuff, only like two separate romance arcs going on here. Why? I, I don't, I don't understand, I, I don't, I don't, but, overall, like I said, story's a little weaker. But has some nice elements, especially with Bianca as a character. Um, also, we get skateboard. That's so cool. It's a little weird of an addition. Um, I mean, we get like flying with like jetpacks and stuff, or like the wings, and then you can do flying challenges and stuff. And that's already been done in the games. But like skateboarding, that's weird. I, but I like it. Like I said, um, it just it's fun to do. Um, and it can just be a really fun time in the game. Um, just go around and zoom and zoom and zoom and then do that. And then, yeah, I like that. Uh, Spyro's new friends that you can play as in the game. Holy moly, you can play as other characters in the game besides Spyro now. Um, I really like them. Uh, it's good that we can do that. I mean, they're not like the greatest characters out there. But they really do add a different level of... They add a lot of new stuff to the levels. New ways to play the levels. And they have cool, unique abilities that really separate them from each other. And they have your own unique levels that you can play in. And while they're not the greatest, most developed levels... It's still really, really cool. And I also love that they assist you in the boss battles. I think that is awesome that, that you can get assistance... When, when fighting the bosses, even though even though the bosses aren't really still that difficult, um, it's nice that you can have a little bit of assistance. Um, oh, so you can play as the Dragonfly thing. I have not even mentioned this guy yet in, in any of my reviews. I don't know how I messed that up, but um, it's, you can play as him now. I wish that could have been done in all prior games. But better late than never, I guess. The le his levels are a little boring. I, I won't. I won't lie. But they're not like the worst thing in the world. And it's another cool character to play as. It's, it's fun. 
One thing that they really changed is that this game is much larger than the first two games. Almost twice the length um, of, of the first game. Or first two games. Um, you get a whole other home world that has its own separate levels. Um, and you get mid-boss, like middle, like like mid midway boss battles through each world area in the game. Which I think is awesome. Um, and, and you, you can... There's a lot of more post-game stuff to do, like chasing down the, um, chasing down money bags, and I haven't even mentioned money bags yet. He's a freaking piss-off creep guy. I don't like him at all. He just hides random shit behind paywalls, and then you gotta, uh, spend an astronomical high amount of, of gems to, to buy him. Almost like, uh, a video game DLC! You gotta do in-game DLC, pretty much. And before DLC was even a thing. So that's awesome. Um, you get to kick the shit out of him. You get to fight the final boss again. And there's just a bunch of other cool stuff to do. That really help add more playtime onto the game. So I like that. The interview at the end when you beat the game is a cool callback to the first game when you also did the interview. Um, so I, I like that little, little touch there too. Um, and then and my only other final thought, because again, a lot of the stuff is just going to otherwise be repeated from my Spyro 2 and Spyro 1 reviews. Um, it just feels like there was a lot of gimmicks in this game that just feel, made them feel, feel like that they were just jumping and, and throwing shit at the wall and just hoping it sticks. Um, you know, they did a lot of gimmicks there were a lot of different doohickeys and gadgets and whatnot um that just really felt like a little bit out of place and i think they would have been better off maybe pacing those between both spyro 2 and spyro 3 maybe in spyro 1 but spyro 1 i think does a good job of being the establishing game if they were planning on doing a trilogy from the beginning which i don't know if they were but um then you do summon two summon three and maybe there's none, some of them don't come in at all. Because um, some of them just felt a little out there. I already talked about like the extra characters and the skateboarding. There's a few other things too that are just a little out there in, in my opinion. It felt like they were kind of starting to run out of ideas and really starting to push the limits um, at, at this point. Because there wasn't really much else that they could do. So... That's my overall thoughts on the game. My final score for uh, Spyro Year of the Dragon, I'm probably going to have to give this one a 7 out of 10. Which I don't even know if I ranked Ripto's Rage. Did I rank it? I don't remember if I did. I hope I did. Um, but if I didn't, that one's also a 7 out of 10. Again, they feel like carbon copies of each other for the most part. With some with some differences um, later on in the game especially. but And then... So that's going to do it for this, that review of the game. But what are my thoughts about the Spire franchise as a whole? It's It, it could have been so much more, is what I'll say. Um, it really could have been. Um, I know there were more games afterwards, and like that kind of like further ran it in the ground. But, I don't know. It, just now looking back on it, especially as somebody who didn't play it when I was younger and doesn't have that like nostalgia factor that I think a lot of other people that are reviewing these games do. Um, it's just... I don't know. It just doesn't feel... It doesn't feel like like full game stuff. It's, it's tough because like there's stuff to do and it fills its premise. But I'm not surprised that the IP died. I'm not surprised about it. Um, now, am I sad that it got relegated to a... Am I sad that it got relegated to a Skylander game as the final nail in the coffin? We'll see. I haven't played that yet. But um, it, it'll be interesting. So, I don't know. It's fine. Just a little bit. It's just pretty boring. And... Um, I don't know. That's really all I gotta say about it. But anyway, that's gonna do it for this game review. If you've ever played Spyro, You're the Dragon, or really any of the games in this uh, Reignited trilogy, I'd love to know your thoughts about it in the comment section down below. 
And that's going to do it for this video as well. So stay tuned for much more amazing content, including more game reviews and other awesome stuff. And until next time, any other Spyro games that you guys want me to play, uh, just put them down in the comment section. I don't have any true other Spyro games on the list right now, but maybe I'll try and get one if, uh, if you guys really want one. So anyways, until next time, see you guys later. Goodbye.